Divine Providence, written by Severin Dungul in 1999. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I think you're okay. My name is Teacher Kariko Rotonjige, the teacher of literature in English. The manager of literature from Shinyanga, Nindo, Diabusaru, Mwajiji, Ndoniko, Zariwa. They are spent Form 5 and Form 6. Teachers, college students, university students, tutorials, lecturers. Welcome on my online channel media, which is based on narration of novels, plays, poems, and short stories. Today I'm going to narrate the novel called Divine Providence. Manayake ni kutoa huduma za kimungu au mungu au maombi kwa wenye zambi. Hamjambo mabibi na mabwana mnaosoma kazi za fasihi hususan katika fasihi ya Kiingereza. Yaani English language tu inayofundishwa kidato cha tano na cha sita. Leo tunaenda kuangalia liwaya inayofahamika kwa jina la divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu au maombi. E, Ilio andikwa na Severin Ndunguru mwake fonji mia tisa, tisini na tisa. Watawa walio kuwa wanatoa huduma za kimungu. Kama vile Padri, Father Wolfgang, Sister Valerian, Father Mariunga na wengine wengi. Wano waombea watu walio kata tama na maisha. Wanawatia moyo waendele kupambana bila kukata tama. Hapa mtu au mhusika mkuu anayeongelewa akiombewa au akipewa huduma za kimungu ni Hosana. Huyu ni mwanamke anayekimbiwa na mme wake aliyekuwa ana lengo la kumuua mmewe lakini baadaye akaanza kujutia juu ya kukimbiwa na mme wake. Anafahamika kwa jina la Richard Mwandika Ulaya. Huyu mama Hosana alipata mimba lakini mwisho wa siku alijifungua mtoto aliyekufa baada ya Christmas na akaanza kulia kujilaumu e, yani alijifungua mtoto aliyekufa kabla ya Christmas mwisho wa siku anamtafuta padri father of kim amuombe juu ya dhambi alizozifanya na anatamani warudiane na mme wake bwana richard mwandika ulaya Ndugu wanafunzi mimi naitwa Teacher Kariko Doto Njige, the teacher of literature in English, the manager of literature kutoka pande za chuo kikuu cha Mwenge kipo mkoani Kilimanjaro wilaya ya Moshi karibu na hospitali ya KSMC. Naomba usichoke kunifuatilia tuendelee. The author of this novel Divine Providence is called Severin Ndunguru from Ruvuma Mbinga Tanzania. The setting of this novel Divine Providence is settled in between London, Scotland, and in Tanzania, especially southern part of Tanzania. Seven Dunguru used different characters in his novel to portray the message to the audience. He used Hosanna as the main character. Hosanna is not a good mother. Uh, she is not faithful. She is hardworking. Hosanna loves of her birth the night before Christmas. This brings back memory of her earth, past life. Due to this, she demands advice from Father Wolfgang at large and Aunt Pauline and Sister Valerian. Being once among the devices, Mpezi Mskisaji, Hasa wanafunzi wa gidato cha tano na cha sita, Walim wanavyo wandish, waliwaya hii, Anaitwa Severin Ndunguru ni mzaliwa wa mkazi wa Ruvuma Mbinga na kazi zake nyingi za fasihi ameandika akionyesha manzali ya mkoa wa Ruvuma. Tunaona hata novo yake ya Erez for Fatamea pamoja na Spared ameonesha kijiji cha Mkongo ambacho kipo mkoani Ruvuma. Bwana Severin Ndunguru ameonesha wahusika aliowatumia kufikisha ujumbe kwetu wasomaji na wasikilizaji juu ya hii novo divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu au mungu muhusika anayeanza naye ni Hosana ambaye ndo muhusika mkuu aliyebeba title ya kitabu chetu maana ndo yeye anayehitaji huduma za kimungu anahitaji aombewe kwa sababu ya dhambi alizonazo juu alivyo 
alivyopanga kumuua mme wake Richard Mwandika Ulaya mpaka akakimbia na mwisho wa siku akajifungua mtoto aliyekufa akaamua amrudie Yesu Kristu aokoke aachane na ujinga wake na mwisho wa siku akamtafuta Padre Wolfgang amuombee zambi zake Huyu mama sio mama mzuri wa familia hana mapenzi mema kwa mume wake Richard Mwandika Ulaya hapa tunaangalia hasa wanawake wa kijana jinsi wanavyoua waume zao pindi wapatapo mali pia wanawake wa Singida wa Nyiramba wa Tatulu wana roho mbaya sana japo kuna kuwa yeye huyu mama alikuwa mchapakazi sana mpenzi msikizaji nikwambie ni tu title ya divine providence iko direct na kile kinachozungumziwa ndani ya kitabu kichwa cha novo iko moja kwa moja maana kinazungumzia maombi kwa sana aliyepatwa na wazo la kujifungua mtoto aliyekufa seven dungur used the father of gang as a was spiritual humble caring the spectacle pia seven dunguru musika mwingine kamtumia padri Wolfgang kama padri mwenye heshima e, kiloho mnyekevu aliyebeba heshima inayostahili kupewa huyu mjue ndo anayetoa maombi au huduma za kimungu au kiroho He was the one who gave her son advice when she wanted to see him and gave her hopes of life regarding matters such as her family the union he later on dies out of cancer Padre Wolfgang ndo mtu wa Mungu aliyekuwa anampa matumaini hosana juu ya maisha pamoja na kuunganisha familia yake warudiane na mume wake Richard Mwandika Ula lakini baadaye huyu padri alifariki na tatizo la kansa ya utumbo mdogo yani Dwayne Another character's called Aunt Pauline, caring wife, the only relative Hosanna has left to too. Care for her during her recover from the boat. Cross Eastern's she is caring and advised Hosanna once she had to. Musika mwingine anayeonesha kwenye hii riwaya anaitwa Shangazi Pauline huyu ndo aliyekuwa anamuuguza Hosanna kipindi amejifungua mtoto aliyekufa. Pauline ni shangazi yake na Hosanna mkalimu anayemjali ili lengo mwili wa Hosanna urejee kwenye hali yake na alikuwa anamshauri Hosanna aache mawazo. Seven Nduguru, you sister Valerian a German who now runs the Saint Teresa Hosto assisted by sister Madonna. She attended Hosanna during her charge bearing process of all her children. Knowing Hosanna well, she was able to also advise her about her health, then and the things she did and asking her to begin new life. Mwandishi wetu kamtua kamtua sister Valerian huyu ni Mjerumani aliyekuwa anamiliki au anasimamia hospitali ya mtakatifu Teresa yeye alikuwa anamsaidizi wake anaitwa sister Madonna sister Valerian amemzalisha ame watoto wake hospitali kama nesi Hosana ndo maana alikuwa anamjua sana Hosana kiundani pia alikuwa anamshauri Hosana achane na mawazo juu ya familia yake alivyo mbalatisha aanze maisha mapya. Another character is called Dr. Hoffman. Father of King Housekeeper for many years. Huyu ni mlinzi wa nyuma wa nyumba ya Padre of King wa muda mrefu. He saw Hosanna at the hostel page LA missionary. Tunaambiwa ya kwamba alimuona Hosanna hospitalini amelazwa kwa ajili ya kujifungua. Pia huyu ni daktari mfahamu. Another character is called Abed Nobat and sister Deokara. Assisted Dr. Hoffman in Ngerengere. Hosto the first story for Father Wolfgang during his stick period. Watu hawa wawili. Abed Nobat pamoja na sister Deokara. Hawa ni madaktari wasaidizi wa Dr. Hoffman katika hospitali ya Ngerengere pia hawa ndo walikuwa wasimamizi wa Father of King kipindi anaumwa Another character is called Richard Mwandika Ulaya Hosanna husband he get a new job at the Harbors Corporation as he is said to be a hard worker and also a man with dreams due to lack of enough money by his parents 
to he never had a chance to go for further studies until then page 26 and continues senior medical officer for the Habas Corporation Richard Nimme Wahusana aliyekosa kifo kwa mke wake na kuamua kuondoka ili akoe maisha yake ili ila ye alipata kazi kwenye shirika la bandari huyu jamaa alikuwa mchapakazi sana na akawa anapandishwa cheo kwa sababu ya juhudi zake za kujituma Richard alikuwa anapambana sana lakini lengo lake lilikuwa ni kutafuta pesa ili aondokane na hadhi ya umaskini He was involved in stolen watches And the mother of Daudi Alare, Bwana Richard alihusishwa naye katika mauaji ya Daudi Alare ambaye ndo mlinzi wa gate. Another character is called Daudi Alare, the gatekeeper of the Harbor Corporation who is very corrupt demanded cigarette from. Sio ni page 3. Huyu ni mwandishi wa gate katika shirika la bandari. Lakini Bwana Daudi Alare alikuwa anapenda rushwa sana ndio maana Magendo mengi yalikuwa yanafanywa sana yeye akipewa sigara tu na mtu anafanya yake na hii inaonyeshwa kurasa wa 30. Is also a great drinker as started in what happened at Kabisera Beach. Sio ni page 35. Daudi ni mlevi wa kupindukia na inaonyesha sehemu ya ufukwe wa Kabisera akinywa. Another character is called Christina. She is the secretary who received Richard at the corporation and escorted him to the area of the, of the interview. Christina yeye ni katibu aliyempokea Richard katika shirika la bandari na kumpeleka eneo la kufanya mahojiano ya kazi. Another character is called Malipula Maria Tabu. Malipula shows that he is a suspected accused of alale murder regarding the Delga that was used. Mapula yeye ni mtuhumiwa anayesemekana ndo aliyehusika na mauaji ya Daudi Alare ambaye ni mlinzi wa shirika la bandari. Another character is called Inspector Mwakibete. He gets to the bottom of the case. This inside investigating people like Asman, Jason and more. Huyu ni polisi anayohusiana na ulinzi wa mali na raia aliyefanya uchunguzi dhidi ya mauaji ya Daudi Alare na kwa kuchunguza kin Asman Jackson pamoja na watu wengine. Another character is called Asman. Daudi Alare's friends who ni rafiki yake na Daudi Alare. Another character is called Mawara's wife. Huyu ni mke wa Mawara, mke bora, jasiri, mchumi wa ujitegemea. Another character is Marieta. Huyu ni binti mrembo kaumbika sifa zote anazo. Another character is called Professor Huxley. Huyu ni msomi aliyekuwa anapambana dhidi ya masuala ya ulevi. Wahusika wengine ambao sijawaelezea ni kama vile Const- Constable William, mwingine anaitwa Inspector Gabriel, mwingine anaitwa Sister Josephine, mwingine Dr. Nyirenda, mwingine Sabt Matola mwingine ni Miranda na Kapila mwingine ni Captain Gladman mwingine members of the jazz mwingine ni Wilson Okwenche mwingine Judge Pretorius Madwaga mwingine Jason Katiti Constable Shauri Tanga Mr Kapungo Dr Mawara Dr Dixon Mtekateka Mr Boko Amelia Mr Chaka Mchaka Father Cleophas Mariunga Boniface Bondman Mpenzi msikilizaji wa kipindi cha my online media novel hii ina wahusika zaidi ya 30 lakini tunaangalia wahusika wakuu wanaobeba ujumbe wa kitabu asanteni sana kwa kusikiliza uchambuzi wa riwaya hii ya mtanzania mwenzetu bwana Seven Dunguru kutoka pande za Ruvuma Mbinga mchambuzi wa kitabu hiki ni teacher Kaligo Dr. Njige The Manjo of Literature nilianza kazi hii nikiwa advance kidato cha 5 na cha 6 hadi 2019 mkoani simi wilaya ya Maswa secondary ya Marampaka hebu tuangalie kivipi mwandishi Seven Ndunguru amepangilia matukio kwenye kazi yake yani novo yake inayoitwa Divine Providence let us look on plot the plot as we know that is an arrangement of an event in a literary work tuangalie upande 
wa plot kwamba mwandishi matukio ka hapa angiliaje so summary of the story the book has no chapter so the story is created by using different titles ukiangalia hii liwaya yani novo yenyewe haina sula haina chapter kabisa lakini ameipangilia kwa kuita majina mbali mbali the story begin with when hosana gives birth and her child is dead so she complained about it and decided to fa- to call for the offgang in order to confess her sin hapa tunaambia kwamba story inaanza kwa kutuambia kwamba hosana yeye amejifungua mtoto aliyekufa na alianza kukulia kulalamika dhidi ya kujifungua mtoto aliyekufa na mwisho wa siku akao akahitaji amuite padri anaitwa father wolfgang kwa lengo la kumwombea zambi zake before father wolfgang died he told hosana that her husband and child were alive and he would play for her in order to meet her family hapa baadaye sasa padri alipokuja father wolfgang alianza kumwambia maneno mengi hosana kwamba mme wake pamoja na mtoto wake bado wanaishi na mwisho wa siku watakuja waungane kwa hiyo alimtabidia the story continue in the hebas corporation when richard mwandika ulaya works there was a murder case and richard discover the one who did it hapa tunaangalia story bado inazidi kutuendelea imetupeleka maeneo ya yeah shirika la bandari ambapo Richard Mwandika Ulaya alikuwa anafanya kazi bandarini lakini kuna mauaji yalikuja kujitokeza baadaye kwanza mlinzi wa geti la bandari bwana Daudi Alale ameua lakini Richard yeye aligundua ni nani aliyefanya hilo tukio Richard went to Europe to study under the scholarship of Professor Huxley who recused by Richard from Downing hapa tunaanza kupewa kwamba mwisho wa siku baadaye Richard alipata scholarship kwenda Ulaya kwa kwenda kufa, kuji, kusoma masuala ya madawa. Richard met with his wife Hosanna who came to Europe to meet Professor Huxley who recused from kidnapping. Hapa tunaanza kwamba mwisho wa siku Richard pamoja na mke wake Hosanna wakao wameungana walienda pamoja huko Ulaya kini wakaanza kufanya kazi bali mbali at last the divine providence suggested by father of king was proved hosana and meet with her husband and child they were live in peace mwisho kabisa tunaanza kwamba kwenye kipengele cha divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu au mungu mwenyewe kwa hiyo tunaambiwa kwamba huyu padri of king anatuonyeshea kwamba hosana pamoja na mume wake pamoja na watoto wake bado wanaishi. Divine Providence usually capitalized also used is the title of God kwamba ukiangalia title yenyewe Divine Providence ina symbolize Mungu yani inawakilisha Mungu title yenyewe. A distinction is usually made between general providence which refer to God continue upholding the existence and natural order of the universe and the special providence which refer to God. Kwa hiyo title yenyewe inazungumza masuala ya kimungu. It's the ordinary intervention in the life of people. Miracle general fall in the letter. Careless. Hapo tunaweza kuambia kwamba title yenyewe ya kitabu yenyewe ina symbolize yaliyomo ndani ya kitabu. Kwa hiyo ina symbolize masuala ya Mungu. Hapa tunaomba tuangalie. Tuangalie plot i imepangili waje na seven ndunguru mwanafunzi wa kidato cha tano cha star plot ya kitabu huu ni flashback yani naangalia tu imeanza na fadha mpangilio wa tukio la kwanza mwandishi ajaandika chapter ameandika kwa majina ndio maana sehemu ya kwanza ameonyesha father wolfking last word yani maneno ya mwisho ya padri wolfking kabla hajafa kwa hiyo sehemu ya kwanza imeanza tu na maneno ya mwisho ya padri father of gang kabla hajafa lakini sehemu nyingine ya pili akaandika kwa jina ambayo inaitwa Hebas Corporation yani baada ya hapo tunapelekwa bandarini kwamba kuna shirika la bandari ambayo inaonyeshwa tendo la pili na tendo la tatu truth will out kwamba sehemu ya ukweli unajionyesha na sehemu na sehemu nyingine ya nne jina ameandika professor Huxley that is ambayo ni sehemu ambayo inaonyesha kwamba sehemu ya nne inaonyesha kwamba ni sehemu ambayo inazungumzia 
profesa huyu ni mtafiti kutoka nchi za Ulaya. Sehemu nyingine ya tano inaonyesha zile is divine providence kwamba kuna mahubiri yani kuna maneno au huduma za kimungu zinaendelea. Na tendo nyingine la mwisho la sita players are, are answered kwamba wale waumini au waombaji majibu yao yanajibiwa. Kwa mwandishi Severin Dunguru katika matukio jinsi alivyopangilia ameyapangilia kwa kuandika kwa majina. Hajaandika chapter wala kusema wa chapter 1, hadi chapter si lakini katumia majina sita kuandika. Sehemu ya kwanza kaandika jina hadi sehemu ya sita. So, let us look on part 1. I can say another name Father Wolfgang Last Ways. Kwa hiyo sehemu nyingine ya kwanza ambayo ita jina la kwanza ameandika kwa jina Father Wolfgang Last Ways. Hali maneno ya mwisho ya huyu padri ambaye ni Father Wolfgang. The story begins when Hosanna gives birth and her child is dead. So she complained about it and decided to call Father Wolfgang in order to confess her sin. Mpenzi msikizaji, riwaya hii ina sula sita, yani imepewa majina sita. Hebu tuangalie sula ya kwanza. Sula ya kwanza inamwongelea Hosana akijifungua mtoto aliyekufa. Hadisi ya novo yetu inaanza kwa kutuambia kwamba Hosana alijifungua mtoto aliyekufa katika hospitali ya St. Teresa ipo kijiji cha na Matui. Ile hospitali ilikuwa inasimamiwa na Sister Devonia. Baada ya kujifungua mtoto aliyekufa, alianza kulalamika na kulia sana, akiamini yote yaliyotokea itakuwa ni dhambi alizonazo mpaka akaamua kumtafuta padri. Father of King amuombe dhambi zake. Alizonazo mkumbuke Hosana nyuma alitaka kumua mume wake mpaka aliondoka kumwacha baada kaanza kujilaumu. Hosana had demanded to see Father of King and so Aunt Pauli had to go ask him to come see to see her. Hosana alipenda sana amuone Padre Wolfgang ndo maana shangazi yake Hosana anaitwa Pauline alienda kumuomba Padre Wolfgang aje amuombe Hosana. Entering the room, Father Wolfgang stared at Hosana who began weeping due to what happening to her and knowing this and through Expensive father of did not stop her until she came down. He spoke to her on words of encouragement and as the her pain. Baadae Padre Wolfkin alirejea chumbani. Hostari aliko Hosana. Hosana alipomtazama. Hosana alianza kulia sana. Padre alitulia mpaka alivonyamadha ndo akaanza kumshauri achane na mawazo. Six months since Hosanna had left the hostel and, see, and life went on together. With her aunt Hosanna though of starting a new life with new job. Mr. Badai Hosanna alianza maisha yake na alipata kazi mpya pia walikuwa wanaishi pamoja na shangazi yake Pauline. Mjue kwa nini Hosanna alikuwa anawaza sana kwa sababu alisalambatisha familia yake baada alijiona anakosa na kuanza kukiri mwenyewe alichokifanya. For the offering death was announced with after Hosanna return to Namatui. Padre Wolfgang alikufa na tatizo la kansa kwenye utumbo mdogo lakini Hosanna alipenda sana aonane tena na Padre Wolfgang kabla ya kifo chake. Lakini kipindi hicho Father of King alikuwa anaumwa sana pia na umri wa padri ulikuwa umeenda sana. Hosana aliandika barua aonane na padri lakini aliambiwa aende kijiji cha na Matui baada ya wiki mbili. Kifo cha Father of King kitangazwa walifanya hivyo lengo kubwa ni kumficha Hosana asije akapatwa na tatizo kwenye anaweza akazimia au kufa akisikia Padre Wolfgang amekufa akiwa kijiji hicho wakabidi wampeleke na Matui. Kijiji cha na Matui ndo walikoenda kumzika Father of King katika jimbo la Senti Kasongona at Ngerengere. Mpenzi msikizaji, Bwana Seven Dunguru plot yake ya, so, ya sula ya kwanza ameweza kutuonesha wahusika kadhaa kama wafuatao Sister Devonia, huyu msimamizi wa hospitali ya St. Teresa. Mhusika mwingine ni Sister Forelian ambaye ali kuwa ni msaidizi wake of Sardini anaitwa Sister Madonna. Kuna vijiji vi kaonesha kama bunyani. Ilio 
kupakana na, na leki yanaya katika kijiji cha Kondoe kuna Saint Carola kuna padri father Hilard Kaiser Blaza Paul Cap and sister Atropin hawa ni watawa wanzilishi katika mission au jimbo la Matui lilianzishwa mwaka 1920 kuna mtu mwingine huyu ndo alikuwa mlinzi wa nyumba au msimamizi wa padri father of king nyumbani kwake anaitwa Boniface Amanda pia kuna mhusika mwingine anaitwa Dr. Hoffman kuna usafiri pia mwandishi Seven Nduguru katuonesha kama bus linaitwa mchaka mchaka bus linalosafiri kutoka gicha na matui kwenda ngerengere gerenge nafikiri watu wa Ruvuma Mbinga Songea Tunduru Newara vijiji hivi mnafahamu pia kuna mtawa mwingine anaitwa Sister Karaoke Asante sana wanafunzi wa kidato cha tano pamoja na si, cha sita walimu hii sula ya kwanza ndo sehemu tunayopata title ya kitabu chetu Divine Providence kimaanisha kutoa huduma za kimungu ambaye mtoaji wa huduma za kimungu ni Father Wolfgang pamoja na wenzake anayeombewa ni Hosanna So let us look on, on part 2 It is called Int Intrigas in the Hebas Corporation This Richard Mwandika Ulaya part of the story whereby he had decided to move on and walk out on his wife of Sana after her character changing to a, his wife of Sana to a was one Sula he ya pili inazungumzia maeneo ya bandalini ni sehemu inayomuongelea mme wa Hosana anaitwa Richard Mwandika Ulaya aliamua kuachana na mke wake Hosana aliyetaka kumuua mme wake hii ndo iliyopelekea Richard kumkimbia mke wake kulingana na tabia za Hosana sio nzuri He write a letter to his wife saying bye and ask Honet to look for him Alimwandikia barua Hosana kwamba kwa heri anaenda kutafuta kazi lilungo ya medical assistant na ile siku alienda kwa ajili ya kufanywa mahojiano yaani interview afanye kazi kwenye shirika la bandari Richard decided to go regardless on the interest they met Mr. Daud Alare the gatekeeper who then him but after giving him what he had asked for cigarette he was allowed escort by a man called Afman Bwana Richard alienda kufanya interview kwenye shirika la bandari lakini yeye ni kitengo cha madawa yani medical assistance alipofika getini alimkuta mlinzi anaitwa Richard Daudi Alare alimzuia kuingia lengo lake tu apewe rushwa yani sigara ukimpa ndo unapita Richard akawa amempa na akamsindikiza na mtu anaitwa Afman the meeting of the The meeting called interview went well. He met the general manager, chairman, Mr. Malipula Maliatabu. Alas, Mr. Lisp together got the jobs as assistant medic of the corporation. Mahojiano Richard Mwandika Ulaya aliyakuta yakiendelea. Na yeye alifanywa na hadi alipata nafasi ya udaktari msaidizi katika shirika la bandari. Kwenye interview hiyo walikuwemo watu wa heshima zao kama vile meneja mkuu bwana Maripula Mariatabu pamoja na Mr. Lips The first month of the week was not easy but Richard manager as a hard worker was people liked him for that He had already cope with the environment and most the language full language of the port employee phrases such as my tea or my cigarette Mwezi mmoja wa kazi haukuwa mlaisi kwa Richard. Alionekana mchapa kazi sana. Aliyepokea watu kwa shangwe, furaha na lugha yenye mvuto na madaha. Na mwishowe mazingira yaliyo adio ya zoea ya aliyazoea ya bandarini. The next early morning Richard received a call from Dr. Mawala telling him that Daudi Alari was murdered. Richard asked a lot in panic but no answer were given but rather he was to prepare for this asubuhi mapema 
Richard alipokea simu kutoka kwa Dr. Mawala akimwambia kuwa Daudi Alale yule mlinzi wa geti ameuawa. Richard ali, alijiuliza mara kwa mara huku kapaniki na hakuwa na jibu na akaanza kujiandaa aondoke. Baadaye uchunguzi ulifanyika na inspekta Mwagibete na mwisho wa siku waka yaani Athmando alifanya tukio la mauaji ya Daudi Alale. So, let us look on part 2. Oh, can you call the truth will out. The murder case begin Maripula begin the victim and the judge Pretorius Madwanga and the inspector Mwagibet assisted by Kilian Shaulitanga and the Wilson Okwenje. Mpenzi msikilizaji, hebu tuangalie sehemu ingine ya tatu iliyopewa jina la the truth will out. Yaani ma, maana yake ni ukweli nje nje. Ukweli huonekana. Hii ni sehemu inalenga mauaji ya mlinzi wa geti anayeitwa Daudi Alari. Sasa uchunguzi wa polisi ndio unaendelea. Bosi mwenyewe Maripula ni mtuhumiwa. Tunaona kuna jaja anaitwa Pretorius Madwanga pamoja na Inspector Mwakibete wakisaidizana na Kilian Shaulitanga pamoja na Wilson Okwenje. Richard decided began getting the bottom of this situation believing that Maripula is innocent. Richard akawa na shauku kubwa ya Maripula huenda ni yeye amefanya tukio lile. Mfano alianza kuuliza watu kama Josephine, Samuel, Matola. Nobody had turned up at and three o'clock at three that sister Josephine came lying to Richard of asking him to come see what had happened Dr. Mawara. Had dead also. Mtekateka also arrested for being involved in this situation. Mwisho wa sehemu ya tatu tumeona eh, swala tatizo eh, saa tisa na nusu kuna sister Josephine akichimbia kwa Richard kutoa taarifa juu ya kifo cha Dr. Mawara pamoja na kukamatwa kwa mteka teka. Mpenzi msikilizaji, hii sehemu inazungumzia uchunguzi wa polisi juu ya kuwa kwa Mr. Daudi Alare ambaye ni mlinzi wa geti, yani mauaji wauaji wanatafutwa niwaambie ukweli juu ya plot ilivyopangiliwa na Severin Ndunguru ni flashback yani matendo ya kinyume hajapangiliwa matendo ya moja kwa moja so let us look on part 4 or can say another name professor Huxley surgeon in Africa professor Huxley who is naturalist of the world he had done work in the para in the Amazon forest of South America. Sehemu hii imepewa jina la Professor Huxley, surgeon in Africa. Ikilenga juu ya mtaalamu au mtafiti wa viumbe hai hasa masuala ya msitu. Watu wa asili pia Alicia. Wahi kufanya utafiti katika bara America ya Kusini, eneo la Pal Amazon Forest. Huyu ni profesa kijana kutoka chuo kikuu cha Oxford, sasa ni mzee ambaye hana hata watoto. Professor met Richard and explained the ex- experience he had carrying the kidnap ab- and about Grace Watua. Who professor alikutana uh, pamoja na Richard hospitalini katika sehemu ya Kondoe kipindi anaendelea kufanya utafiti mbalimbali kwenye misitu na alienda hospitalini na alikaa kwa siku nne na rafiki yake alikuwa ni Richard Mwandika Ulaya wakawa wanaongelea juu ya masuala ya utekaji nyara. Mpenzi msikilizaji, nikwambie tu sehemu hii, yani inazungumzia tu utafiti wa profesa kutoka nchini Uingereza. Anafanya utafiti wa uoto wa asili na viumbe hai na visivyo hai. Wanafunzwa kidato cha tano na cha sita. Hebu tuangalie upande mwingine tuone kumbuka plot ni flashback sio set forward wala chronological. Matukio hajapangiliwa moja kwa moja. Mimi naitwa Teacher Karigo Doto Njige kutoka Chuo Kikuu cha Katoliki Mwanza. So let us look on part 5. Mm? There is a divine providence. Sehemu hii ya tano inaonyesha kuna maombi au naweza nikasema kuna huduma za kutoa maombi. Days went on and death of <coughs> Dr. Mawala was being spoken at a large Sehemu hii inaonyesha kifo cha daktari anayefahamika kwa jina la Dr. Mawara ambaye kifo chake kimeenea nchini. People starting talking about Dr. Mawara's death and suspecting some is 
to have been the cause Dr. Richard received the cave. Watu walianza kuongelea kuhusu kifo cha Dr. Mawala kitakuwa kimesababishwa na Dr. Richard Mwandika Ulaya. Richard life was now in danger people were hunting him down to kill him by enemies. Maisha Richard yalikuwa hatarini maana watu walianza kumuwinda wamuwe kwa namna yoyote. He received a letter from the professor of University of Glasgow in Scotland it was found for him. Richard stayed with, with the professor for months before going to Glasgow. Professor found this interesting and agreed and thought he was not a man of going to church as doing such stuff we had also felt the urge to declare that there was divine providence and that all happened for a lesson and it is directed from above persuaded Hosan at to stay with her husband and so the other two went back mpenzi msikie sehemu ya title yetu ya divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu au maombi tuta tunaipata sehemu hii ya tano ambapo profesa aliyetokea Uingereza London ndo yeye aliyeongelea kuwa yeye sio mtu wa kwenda kanisani ambapo kuna watu wanaenda kwa ajili ya kuombewa dhambi zao pia Richard alipokea barua kwa profesa aende chuo kikuu cha Glasgow ambacho kipo Scotland tukumbuke kwamba kabla hajaenda Scotland Richard alikaa kwa miezi Miwili na profesa anampa maelekezo ya kufikia huko afanyaje. Arrangement were made for for Hosanna to get a job as a midwife where Dr. Richard was working at the Queen Hospital. A year after Hosanna gave birth to babe, twins called Kenneth and Wolfgang. Richard was astonished by his wife character changed all this time. Pensu wanafunzi hapa tupo mandhari ya Uingereza. Britain ambapo Richard pamoja na mke wake walienda Uingereza ambapo Richard alipewa kazi ya kwenda kufanya huko Britain katika hospitali ya Queen yani Malikia. Lakini ndo mke wake Hosanna alikuwa anafanya kazi kama mkunga. Baada ya mwaka Hosanna alijifungua watoto mapacha na aliwaita majina ya mmoja alimuita Kenneth mwingine alimuita Wolfgang. Richard alianza kushangaa tabia za mke wake alikuwa anabadilika badilika kila mda tabia zake baada ya kujifungua later on professor did richard and hosanna saw no point in remaining in britain but rather go back in condoy and open a hospital mwisho wa siku professor mwenye zaidi ya miaka 76 alifariki huyu ndo aliyowapeleka kina richard pamoja na mke wake hosanna mwisho wa siku dr richard na mke wake hosanna waliamua kurudi kondoe kuli kuliko kubaki Uingereza. Waje wafungue hospitali ndo maana Richard aliporudi kondoe alianza kufanya harakati za kujenga hospitali na pia alifanya kazi hospitali mbalimbali hapa ndo sehemu ya tano aliyopewa kwa jina la Salisa Divine Providence kimaanisha kuna maombi ni sehemu inayotupa mwanga wa title yetu ya kitabu. Mimi naitwa Ticha Kadonji yani karibu doto njige advanced level kidato cha tano ninasoma mara mpaka mwaka simu mwanafunzi tuangalie sehemu inayo fa, inayo fata, inaitwa maombi yamejibiwa plot ni flashback mkumbuke part 6 players are answered kwamba tuangalie sehemu ya sita iliyopewa kwa jina players are answered kwamba maombi e, ya waombaji yamejibiwa Dr. and Mr. Mwandikaulaya were back in Kondoe. Spent the, fe- the first two months resting and visiting relative uncle Domando, Domondo. Being one of them, he was now advanced in age. It took him time to understand how his marriage Richard had gone back to Norm Hosanna and Richard were anxious to see their daughter but Domondo told them that he had gone to Shisha with his friend Joshua Chikau who was promised to take her to the best schools in Shisha but as time went by stopped writing in Domondo was now too old to travel to the city mpenzi msikilizaji tunaangalia sehemu ya mwisho ya kitabu chetu cha divine providence kikionesha tayari maombi yametimia yale hosana akimuomba 
eh, familia yake irudiane maana waliachana. Tunaona sana Richard wamerudiana na wanaanza kumtafuta mwanao Marieta aliyechukuliwa na Joshua Chikawe na kupelekwa shule iliyokuwa inafahamika kushisha skulu. Pia tumeona daktari pamoja na sana wanarudi hii cha kondoo ambacho walikaa huko kwa miezi miwili. Walimtembelea mjomba wao Domondo aliyekula chumvi nyingi. Yaani umri wake umeenda ni mzee sana. Richard also went to Namatui to see Father Mariunga who was now the priest in charge in church. He spoke, he spoke of his intention to build a hostel somewhere in Unyanja. Richard alienda kijicha na matui kuna na padri Madiunga ambaye alikuwa na matarajio ya kujenga ustadi. Teresa Osto was in this discapable condition there was no drugs and equipment. Mkumbuke ustadi ya St. Teresa isha zauriwa kwa hali iliyofikia haina madawa wala vifaa ya matibabu. Worries about their daughter increased and Richard decided to contact his friend Duncan Kaona who was a doctor in Lundo the capital of Ushish asking him to find about her daughter and the man called Joshua Chikawe in a small town called Chita Richard alikuwa na wasiwasi mkubwa sana juu ya mwanae aliyepotea anamtafuta Richard alienda kuongea na rafiki yake daktari Duncan Kaona ambaye alikuwa dokta wa mji wa Rundo katika eneo la Ushisha alimomba amtafutie mwanae Marieta na aulizie kwa mtu anayemfahamu kwa jina la Joshua Chikawe anayepatikana mji mdogo wa Chita Dokta Kaona writes back of informing Richard that Joshua Chikawe dead of cholera Dr. Kaona aliandika ujumbe kwa Richard kuwa Joshua Chikawe ashafariki na ugonjwa wa kolera. Kipindipindu, Richard mwandika Ulaya akawa ana wasiwasi mkubwa juu ya mwanae binti yake wa kike Marieta. Haonekani toka waachane na mke wake na mtoto wa naye maisha yakawa ya kuzura. Hii sehemu ya mwisho inaonesha maombi ya usana yalijibiwa na Mwenyezi Mungu sana alikuwa anaomba kurudiana na mme wake dhambi zingine alizonazo aliondolewa ali, kwake maana alikuwa ana lengo la kumuua mme wake anaitwa Dr. Richard Mwandika Ulaya huyu ndugu zangu mfahamu ni somi alienda kusomea masuala madawa na akajiliwa kwenye shirika la bandari pia alifanya kazi mbalimbali hospitalini mwisho wa siku familia ya Hosana ikaungana wakarudiana na maisha yakasonga mbele Pele msikizaji mwanafunzi wa kidato cha tano na cha sita. Mimi naitwa Ticha Karibu Doto Njiki. Kubabu Kisendi Sungwa Mange Jibuta, mzalio wa Shinyanga, lakini nimekulia Tabora Igunga baadaye tukahamia Mbeya, Chunya. Hebu tuangalie upande wa dhamira ndani ya kitabu cha Divine Providence, yani kutoa e, huduma za kimungu au maombi au Mungu. Mkumbuke plot yenyewe ni flashback ina matendo ya kinyume nyume so let us look on them dear students form 5 and form 6 this is the main idea that we get from a literary book the major theme in this novel are belief prostitution hooliganism and corruption tukiangalia zamira ku kwenye hii liwa ya yani novo divine providence yani kutoa huduma za Mungu. Kuna zamila kubwa ya kwanza inaitwa belief yani imani. Ndio maana imebeba sana mwanzo mpaka mwisho inazungumzia masuala ya imani. Zamila nyingine kuna masuala ya prostitution umalaya kwa wanawake na pia zamila nyingine ni corruption masuala ya rushwa. Tuangalie zamila moja baada ya nyingine kwamba inazungumziaje kuhusu masuala ya imani zinazo ibuka. So let us look the first themes which is uh, belief. In this novel the author has used Christian to deliver his message to the society. The author uses the dream of Osana that she was with her husband Chad and father of gang while she don't know where they live. She dreams that she was tending 
on the dink of wide liver, and standing on the other side of the river were two men and a girl. One of the men and the girl were of the same chocolate color as the horse and herself, but she could not make out who they were because of distance. This is on page 16. Hapo tukangalia kwenye dhamira ya imani tunaona kwamba kuna watu wana imani tumeonyesha kwamba kuna dini ya Kikristo ambao watu wanaabudu makanisani wanaenda kusali ndio maana watu wanaombewa ndio maana ukiangalia hata title yenyewe imesuggest that your divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu kuna masuala ya imani watu wana imani wanaenda kanisani kuombewa na imeonyeshwa ukurasa wa 16 tunaona kwamba anaitoa maombi ni tunaona ni padri anaitoa father of wolfgang pamoja na wafuasi wake because of her christian faith hosanna decided to find father of wolfgang who was a parish leader of her church which has called kaloro luanga in order to reveal her dream he translated her dreams as standing across the river does not mean that he is dead and it is, does not mean that a husband and daughter are dead hapa tunaweza kwamba tunaona kiasi gani kwamba watu wanavyo imani ambao wanaamini e, katika maombi ndio maana tunaona kwamba hosana yeye ali, aliamua kumtafuta padri anaitwa father of king amuombee dhambi zake ndio maana akawa anaenda kanisani e, kuna makanisa ambayo yanaitwa karoro ambayo iko sehemu ya rwanga kwa lengo la mtu atimizwe ndoto zake acha na masuala ya mawazo mbalimbali alionayo na kuwaza juu ya jambo fulani ndio maana yeye hosana alikuwa na lengo awaone mume wake pamoja na mtoto wake waliopotea wameondoka he think they are both alive so father of king though that the long year called that the cast across towards the present is the prayers and the prayers of her husband and daughter through prayers she will be able to rejoin her family this is on page 23 20, therefore though this liberation hosana joined her husband in europe hapa tunaanza kwamba tunaonyesha ukurasa wa 23 baadaye kwamba hosana pamoja na mume wake dr richard mondekaulaya wakawa wameungana tunaonyesha sehemu ambayo waliungana pale walipoenda ulaya kwa kwa, spo, kwa sponsor ya professor huxley na mwisho wa siku imeonyeshwa ukurasa wa 23 wameshaungana na mambo safi ndio ilikuwa ni tamanio la hosana kwamba aungane na familia yake na ukisoma 23 nasema kwamba my wife exclaimed richard grace leaned on richard's chest and embraced her tears rolled down her face and richard also fought back tears this on page 100 and kuangalia ukurasa wa 102 kuna mazungumzo ambayo yako nazidi kuendelea kati ya Richard pamoja na mke wake e ambaye ni Hosana alikuwa Richard anamwambia Siafu the Christian face of Hosana made the title of the book Divine Providence be, become God intervention kwa ndio maana tukiangalia e, Hosana ndio yeye alipelekea kutupa title yani kichwa cha kitabu chenyewe kinachoitwa divine providence yani kutoa huduma za kimungu au maombi kwa Mungu ambaye mwenyewe mwenye dhambi zake alikuwa ni Hosana lakini yeye akawa anahitaji maombi aombewe familia yake wa, wa, waje waungane pamoja na mtoto wao wakae pamoja na mwisho wa siku ikawa imetokea hivyo the second theme is called prostitution Prostitution is a business or practice of engaging in sexual relation in exchange for payment or some other belief. Kwa mfano kwamba umalaya, hii ni biashara ya mtu kuuza mwili wake. Prostitution is sometimes described as commercial sex. A person who works in this field is called prostitute and is kind of sex worker. Prostitution is one of the branches of the sex industry. The legal status of prostitution varies from country to country from being permissible but unregulated to an enforced or an enforced crime or to regulated profession prostitution is sometimes also refers to the world oldest professional 
estimating place the annual reveal gener generated by prostitution worldwide to be over dollar one hundred billion. In this novel, Hosanna is is a prostitute and separated from her family because of for her prostitution. Tunaweza kupewa heza mila wa Malaya. Malaya mwenyewe ndo anayezungumzia huko kwenye hii riwaya ni Hosanna mwenyewe. Ndio maana waliweza kuachana na mume wake kwa sababu ya hali ya Malaya alikuwa anatembea na wanaume mbalimbali. Ndio maana mume wake bwana Richard mwandika Ulaya akaamua kwamba aachane naye kabisa. Na wewe ukisoma ukurasa namba 4 inasema kwamba but untad my heart is heavy bewandered and anguished everybody is laughing at me everybody knows that i'm a whole i do not even know who's pregnant this last one was tukianza kuangalia hapa haya alikuwa ni maneno ya dr richard mondekola ambaye ni mme wao sana alikuwa anayaongea kwamba watu walikuwa nafahamu jinsi ya mke wake jinsi alivyo malaya anatembea na watu wengi huenda hata watoto ambao tunaoza sio watoto wangu prostitution caused her to miscarry her pregnancy more than two times till she confessed the belief father of king and become a good woman and was then able to meet with her family again ndio maana ninaonyesha kwamba umalaya ndio pelekea hata e, ndoa nyingi za hosana kutoka ndio maana ndoa nyingi sana kwa napata ujauzito lakini ndoa zina ndoa za mimba za hosana zilikuwa zinatoka ndio ndio angalia kwamba hii ni hali ambayo inaonyesha kwamba hosana ye alikuwa ni mwanamke mara mpenzi msikilizaji hapo tumeweza kuona kiasi gani kwamba hosana yeye aliweza kuachana na mume wake kwa sababu ya umalaya alikuwa anatembea na wake wengi na wanaume wengi so let us look another themes tuangalie zamira nyingine ya tatu ambayo inasema kwamba inazungumzia masuala ya corruption kwamba tuangalie swala ya rushwa iliyo kisiri eh, taifa at the heba corruption was seen as a part of normal life but the workers even when you enter the gate of hebas you have to pay money to the corruption now money what do you chai you have my cigarette without my cigarette how do you expect me to let you in position pay that kiangalo kwanza wa 30 tunaona kwamba huyo mlinzi wa gate alikuwa anaitwa Mr. Daudi Alare ambaye alikuwa anapenda sana masuala ya rushwa au mpe sigara ili uweze kuingia ndani. Not only that but also the language in the heba of was bribery. Hata lugha ambayo kuna tumia ndani ya shirika la bandari ilikuwa na swala swala masuala ya rushwa. This was shown clearly during the interview of Richard. It seems that it is very difficult to stop corruption in the workplace. Richard asked by one member in the interview what that what is the said promise of their part kpp richard answered that he shall never give not deceive corruption but the panel member ignore him by saying i tell you that if you can keep these promises while you are an employee of this corporation you will be the exception personally tunaona kwamba kuna member wa shirika la bandari walikuwa walimuuliza swali kwamba vi unachukua hicho masuala ya rushwa sasa mbele masuala ya rushwa hata ungana nayo mkono lakini member walimkatalia kwamba rushwa ni kitu cha msingi the host of this novel shows this creativity because when you start leading you cannot put the novel down without finishing the semantic concern of the novel blood our different message tukiangalia eh, kusoma hii diwaya mwandishi mm, ya seven ndunguru eh, ina, inakushawishi eh, uangalie vitu vya msingi kuhusiana na vitu ndio maana umeona zamila kuna rushwa corruption kuna issue ya prostitution malaya ambao ni hosana mwenyewe pamoja na believe ambao ndo zamila kuu ambaye ni imani tukiangalia zamila zingine zinazofuata kuna betra ya usaliti 
Nani zaliye msaliti? Kuna sauti ambayo unajitokeza kati ya Hosana eh Hosana pamoja na Richard kwamba Hosana ni msaliti mume wake Richard ndio maana akawa na, na waume mbali mbali tena kuna usaliti mwingine kati ya Richard na Zaba hivi kwamba Richard yeye anaoesha usaliti ya watoto watoto walio wanaza na Hosana walikuwa na wakataa maana na amini kwamba ni wa wanaume wengine kuna usaliti mwingine kati ya Dr. Mawara pamoja na Malipula Arare Zamira nyingine inayofuata ambayo ni ya tano inasema ni crimes yani uhalifu nani sasa uhalifu tunaona kwamba eh, kuna story good walins ambayo inaomba kuna masuala ya uhalifu nao jitokeza kwenye ni kwenye storm mbalimbali vitu vinaibiwa kuna murder of alale kuna mauaji yanayojitokeza ambayo Daudi alale ambaye ni mlinzi wa shirika la bandari aliuawa kwa kuna masuala ya uhalifu kuna sexide sexide tunazoa kujua kwamba dr Mawara alijua yeye mwenyewe kwa hiyo kuna masuala ya dhamira ya mauaji iko pale pale attempted murder kwamba Hosana yeye mwenyewe alitaka kumuua mme wake ambaye ni dr Richard mwandika ulaya dhamira nyingine ni ya stain inaitwa Bravery Bravery ni ujasiri ambaye ni mjasiri nani mhusu tunamzungumzia hapa ni Grace wa Tua ni mjasiri kwa mambo mbali mbali pamoja na Richard na yeye pia ni jasiri alikuwa na pambana vidi ya vitu fulani vizidi kuendelea na pia nyingine ujasiri ni Kristina tuangalie za ile nyingine ya sababu inaitwa patriotism ambaye ni uzalendo ambaye mzalendo ni nani Richard Kamba katu Afrika tu beauty wazo tu kwamba mzalendo ni Richard ambaye alifanya kazi Ulaya lakini mwisho wa siku akaamua kurudi Afrika kwenye nchi yake kijiji cha Kondoi lengo lake ni kuja kujenga hospitali ili awasaidie wa Afrika wenzake na zamira nyingine ya nani ndio inaitwa protest yani masuala ya upingaji ambaye sasa Richard alikuwa anapinga dhidi ya wovu unaozidi kuendelea same number so let us look on conflict tuangalie migogoro ya leo ibuka bali mbali kuna internal conflict kwa mgogoro wa kinafsi mwenyewe ambao Hosana yeye mwenyewe alikuwa na mgogoro moyoni anajiuliza kwamba kwa nini ameweza kuachana na mume wake kwa kusambatisha kwa familia aye ikawa inamuuma na pia mgogoro ngoro mwingine wa kibinafsi haipojifungua watoto wengi walikuwa na akishika mimba watoto wanakufa yani mimba iko haishiki yani inatoka kwa hiyo akawa na mawazo mbalimbali tuangalie mgogoro baina ya mtu mmoja na mwingine kuna mgogoro kati ya Richard pamoja na Hosana zidi ya kutembea na waume wengine kuna mgogoro mwingine ni Richard pamoja na Mrs. Mawara yani mgogoro ambao hawa pata na pia mgogoro mwingine kati ya International Crimes pamoja na British Government serikali ya Uingereza pamoja na waafrika wao wazo hawapata kwa kuna migogoro mbali na pia kuna migogoro ya family conflict migogoro ya kifamilia ndio tunaona kwamba Richard pamoja na mke wake Hosana walisambatia na wao wameingia kwenye conflict baada ya kwao wameachana pia kuna social conflict kuna migogoro ya kijamii ndio maana kuna mauaji mbalimbali yanazidi kujitokeza maana pande moja fulani inaji inajikweza zingine zinawanyanyasa wale wengine. So let us look look on position the role of women in society. Waangalie nafasi ya mwanamke katika jamii kachorwaje. Oh, the woman portrayed as a hard worker. Kama mwanamke amechorwa kama mchapa kazi na mfano tunao mtumia ni Grace Watua kwamba ni mchapa kazi na pia woman portrayed as a brave kwamba ni jasiri ambaye ni Grace Watua pia a woman portrays a loving mother and a good wife kwamba mwanamke kachorwa kama mke bora ambaye ni mtu mzungumza ni Grace watu anachapa kazi na pia mwanamke portrayed as a caring kwamba ni anajali ambaye ni mfano ni Pauline alikuwa na mjali sana shanga ambaye ni nani ambaye ni Hosana kipindi ame amepata ndo tatizo la kujifungua watoto walio kufa na pia mwanamke kachorwa kama colleges yani jasiri ambaye ni Christina So let us look on title of the novel. Tuangalie title ya novel novel yenyewe kwamba kichwa cha novel yenyewe kina, kina suggest ya leo ndani. It is a direct title. It is talk about a many characters called Hosan who suspected to be hmm, to, to be confessed by father of Gen. Ndio kwamba title yenyewe kichwa cha novel yenyewe kina suggest ya leo mboni kichwa mboni cha moja kwa moja kinaoonyesha tukio lenyewe ambapo nimezungumzia mtu anayeombewa yani divine providence kutoa huduma za kimungu ambaye anayeombewa ni Hosana anaombewa na padri anaitwa Father of Gain kuondolewa dhambi zake ambazo alikuwa anazo ndio maana ukiangalia kusoma padri ya kwanza ambayo inaitwa Father of Gain the last word kwa maneno ya mwisho ya 
Mwanzo mpaka mwisho kila kila tendo limeonyeshwa maswala ya haya ya maombi zaidi ambao kuna maombi na maombi baadaye yakawa yamejibiwa mwisho wa siku kwa sana akawa wamerudiana na mume wake ambaye walikuwa wameachana so leta sio kuna seti tuangalie manzari manzari ya hii novo yani riwaye yenyewe ni wapi so, so two setting which are britain in london and scotland kuna manzari zimechoa sehemu mbili kuna manzari ya uingereza pamoja na manzari ya tanzania Manga, manzari ya uingereza imelenga katika eneo la london pamoja na scotland na pia manzari nyingine ya tanzania ikienda vijiji kama kondoe unyanja pamoja na matu na vijiji vingine na sehemu nyingine pamoja na sentereza so let us look on style tuangalie mitindo ya uandishi mwandika tumiaje mitindo ya mwandishi katumia dialog kwa njia ya mazungumzo baina ya watu mmoja na baina ya kwa mfano kuna mazungumzo kati ya Richard pamoja na mke wake Hosana kuna mazungumzo kati ya Richard na pamoja na mwandika na mwandi, na pamoja na Dr. Mawanto pia style nyingine tumia ni kwa style ya interview kuna mazungumzo kuna interview ambayo mbalimbali zikuwa zinaendelea kwa ajili ya kuomba kazi kwenye shirika la bandari na pia barua zimetumika e, watu wanaandikana na barua kufikisha ujumbe so let us look on the author seven dunguru from binga rufuma tanzania so ngalala e, author mwenyewe tunemfahamu kwa jina anaitwa mbeni seven dunguru kutoka wilaya mbinga mkoa wa rufuma tanzania ameweza aliweza kuandika novo zake zingine inaitwa spared eh yani imehifadhiwa pamoja na elezo for father mayor yani kabuli au eh heshima kwa padri mayor pamoja na novo nyingine inaitwa divine providence yani kutoa huduma za Mungu hayo zilikuwa ni sehemu ambayo za kipekee yani ambayo imeweza kuonyesha eh, huyu mwandishi Seven Ndunguru so let us look mm, let us look on figures of speech tuangalie tamazeli za semi kwamba seven ndunguru kazi onyeshaje in this novel there are numerous significant little devices namely imagery stream consciousness and dialogue tuangalie tamazeli za semi hizo kuna imagery yani kwa njia ya lugha ya picha yani katumia lugha ya picha imagery in this novel portrays through dream mm imeonyesha masuala ya ndoto it's a dream of sana imagine she was uri ha husband yenyewe eh, imagine ile lugha ya taswiri imetumia kwamba kwa Hosana Hosana yeye alikuwa anaamini kwamba baadaye ataweza kurudiana na mume wake pamoja na mtoto wake mahali aeta and the father of king while she does not know where they live na pia alikuwa anatengeneza imagine kwamba ataenda kuishi wapi na hiyo kusoma kurasa namba 16 inasema kwamba imagine yenyewe inaonyesha sema kwamba she had a strange dream She dreamed that she was standing on the bank of a wide river standing on the other side of the river where two men and a girl one of the men and the girl were the same chocolate color as her son herself but they could not make all who they were because of distance hapo tunaweza kwamba class number 16 imeonyesha kwamba kuna image ile ilikuwa na pia image ya class number 17 Hosanna began a plead my husband please come and fill me a cross marieta my daughter i know i have sinned before you and before god hapo tunaona kwamba kuna image ile fulani alikuwa anatengeneza hosana kwamba mume wake aliweze kurudi nyumbani kwa hali maombi ambayo kwa naomba kwa mume wake arudi pamoja na mtoto wake ili waweze kuungana so use of image help the reader to visualize and more realistically experience the author writing image is not limited to only visual sensation but the also referred agent tuangalie tamadhani nyingine ya same figures speech nyingine is a stream of consciousness Hosan has interrupted and unhindered occurrence of thought and idea in their conscious mind in order to find the meaning of the her dream alikuwa kuna maswala ya umakini kuna mtu anapata kwamba ukurasa namba 18 nasema kwamba What does this dream mean? We have heard about Father of King's serious illness. Is he dead? If he is dead and has started life beyond she grave, why should be he in the company of my husband and my daughter as they also did? Have they also crossed the river of life? Who is it? this enemy? Was the name my crocodile? which is the meaning of pulling me across the river with cold. Mm. Also stream of consciousness portrays also in page 
32 kwa sababu sasa namba hii mwanzo tena hii a stream of consciousness mm. also on page 104 stream of consciousness imeonyeshwa tena na Richard was doubtful about joining his wife after many years have passed kwamba kuna stream of consciousness nyingine ambayo Richard mwenye alikuwa anajiuliza baada ya kuungana na mume wake mwanzo wa 108 nane another figure of speech ingawa mm. tunaangalia in terms of bonus kusema ndaroji ndaroji is used almost in each chapter in the story follows what the matter sister i'm surprised to see only two approach left perhaps you look one and one the approach is sasa hapo tumeweza kuangalia figure of speech ambazo hizo tumia na mwandishi yani seven ndunguru sasa tuangalie message eh ujumbe tuliopata kwenye hii liwaya. Me, ujumbe leo pata kwa kuna masuala ya petra. Tuachie na masuala ya usaliti. Tuachie na masuala ya corruption, rushwa sio nzuri. Na pia natakuwa tuungane. Yaani unity, patriotic, yani uzalendo ni jambo I'm saying sana conflict is not the best way of solving conflict. Kwa sababu mikokoro sio njia njema ya kutatua <coughs> mikokoro. Na kipengele cha mwisho kabisa ni relevance kwamba hii novo yani ni waya inahusiana yaliyomo ndani. Mm. Kuna masuala ya petraya, corruption, conflict, crime. Yote haya e, yanatokea katika jamii zetu. Hapo ndo nimefika tamati ya kitabu au liwa yetu ya mtanzania mwenzetu Seven Nduguru aliandika akilenga zidi ya masuala ya ugumu wa maisha kuto, ku, ku, kukata tamaa na maisha yanayopelekea kifo kuvunjika kwa ndoa wizi kusalitiana asanteni sana kunisikiliza na watakia siku njema msisahau kusubscribe ku like ku comment chini ya hii video mie naitwa teacher karigo dotonjike kubabu kisendi sungwa mange juuta kutoka chuo kikuu mwenge 2019/2022 agast 15 kwaheri bye bye asanteni kwa kun